Dr. Palmore, thank you for joining me this afternoon. Uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to talk with you uh, a little bit more about the work that you did to defeat this superbug that uh, had spread across the, the NIH hospital last year. I talked with your colleague a little earlier. It's an incredible story, uh, and I'm eager to learn more. Uh, it seems like you were given an impossible task uh, trying to defeat this, uh, this outbreak. Where did you start? We, in some ways, had prepared as a hospital to see bacteria like this. We, we knew from uh, CDC reports that bacteria like the Klebsiella pneumoniae that uh, caused the outbreak at the NIH Clinical Center had caused outbreaks at many other hospitals. And there were many published reports and unpublished reports of, of similar spread in other hospitals. Um, with varying degrees of success in controlling spread using standard hospital epidemiology tools. So our microbiology lab was prepared to identify these bacteria and we had in our mind that eventually we would see patients with the bacteria. Of course, all the preparation in the world doesn't doesn't give you a date and a time when you're you're going to face that situation. So so when when the patient was uh, transferred to us from another hospital uh, who was a carrier of this um, highly resistant Klebsiella organism, we put into place the plans that we had had envisioned, which was to put the patient in an enhanced contact isolation room and really engage healthcare workers in um, stepping up hand hygiene and adherence with other infection control precautions. When a few weeks later, we identified a second case and became uh, it be, really became became the beginning of an outbreak. Um, that is when Julie and Evan Sinitkin stepped in and collaborated with David Henderson, who is the deputy director of clinical care at the clinical center, and myself in trying to defeat this outbreak genomically in addition to using all the barrier precautions and other techniques that we used in uh, standard infection control methods. I'm sure patience is part of the equation. What else would you attribute your success to as a team? Uh, our interdisciplinary collaboration was absolutely key to the, to the whole thing. Um, so we were two scientists and two physicians, and you know, w one was a physician who is this effectively the medical director of the hospital, David Henderson. Um, there's myself, who's also an infectious disease physician who was treating some of the patients involved in the outbreak, directly treating them, uh, and and then two uh, PhD scientists with I incredible. Uh, genomics and bioinformatics capabilities. So are, are the interdisciplinary na nature of our collaboration really made, made this scientific uh, advances possible. And then um, the really our efforts to control this outbreak and stop the outbreak involved collaboration among every employee of the hospital, of every NIH staff member who saw patients and who contributed through their own efforts. This was, there were tremendous efforts by the nursing staff and the physician staff and ancillary medical staff of the hospital. So in a sense, the team was actually the entire NIH clinical center. Uh, even with the success you ultimately achieved, I'm sure there were bad days as well as good days. What kept you and the team from sort of just throwing up your hands uh, and, and remaining resolute around figuring this out and stopping the outbreak? Uh, we wanted really to control spread uh, in order for them not to become just permanent residents of our hospital and our patient population. So that's what's happened in many hospitals, um, for example, in New York, uh, in New Jersey, and other countries as well, places where, where the bac these bacteria are so prevalent that they're considered endemic or just essentially normal. They've become the new normal in those places. So we really didn't want that to happen. So the more we could 
circumscribed, the more we could limit spread, um, the better we could could guarantee that we would have control over the the situation in the future. As incredible as the the story is in this specific context, I'm wondering if you could sort of generalize your experience, your success factors to an HHS population beyond just the medical community, when there isn't that sense of urgency, what advice would you offer other HHS leaders on how to solve problems and innovate uh, to achieve their goals? Well, I, I certainly now really believe in the power of collaboration um, and cross-disciplinary collaboration um, in particular. Uh, I also think that, that uh, collecting and soliciting uh, advice from others is is really important. Some of the best ideas we had that we got for uh, practical ways to limit spread of bacteria came from um, non-physicians and non-scientists, came from respiratory therapists and housekeepers and and nurses. And I think that that there the the kind of kinds of collaboration that occur um, at NIH. Uh, certainly can occur and do occur in other agencies. So I recommend really listening to other people, listening to to people who have a different perspective and different expertise. I, I do also want to say that there was cross-HHS cross, cross HHS, um, collaboration here as well. Uh, we had plenty of help from the CDC um, in terms of expertise in outbreak management. So we, we consulted with CDC several times, CDC experts on Klebsiella, uh, highly resistant Klebsiella, several times by phone, and then we also had uh, one expert come and make a site visit and help us just look at the whole picture and see what we could be missing and what else we could do. So we greatly appreciated that, that help from CDC.